Okay, so welcome back. Um, this is emergency ultrasound and intermediate level. Um, again, disclosures, don't have any financial disclosures. Same ground rules, no smoking, no iPhones, nothing that Steve Jobs makes. And, again, there's going to be questions for prizes. Next uh, thing I want to talk about is image resolution. There's four components to image resolution that I want you guys to understand. Um, the first two are axial and lateral resolution. Axial resolution is how, can, how well can I discern something that is more anterior than something that is more posterior. So along this long axis, um, how can I discern what's that from that? Lateral resolution is just on a more horizontal plane. How can I discern what is on the left side of the screen versus how I can see something on the right side of the screen? All right, so the rest of the exam stands for a rapid ultrasound and shock and hypertension. Um, it's basically a protocol that looks at the pump, the tank, and the pipes. Um, pump being your cardiac output, the tank being are you hydrated well enough, and the pipes mean um, do you have any sources um, that may lead to hypertension, such as a dissection or a DVT. So, the pump. In the thoracic exam, the main thing you want to do is rule out pneumothorax. This is a quick and easy test I think everyone should be able to do. It doesn't take much. I mean, I talked tone here for two seconds. Okay. <laughs> um, I can barely breathe. Yeah. <laughs> Patient first should be lying down flat. Um, the reason why you want them to be lying down flat is you want any air to basically come to the surface of the chest. If you have them sitting up, there's a chance you'll miss a pneumothorax because the air will be sitting up in the apices. apices. So, um, you go along the midclavicular line, in between two ribs, uh, with, the with the indicator points towards the patient's head. And what you're going to see here um, is you're going to see rib shadow, rib shadow, tissue, and then lung, right here. And so when you have the patient breathing, you can kind of see all these little guys that are kind of moving and sliding. We call that as like the marching ants. So IBC index exam actually is a sub xiphoid long axis, if you think about it. However, um, how I like to teach it, um, you can just take your probe, put it longitudinally, and go sub xiphoid, and then just kind of pan over to the right side of the patient until you see this big black blood vessel. That could be your IBC. Um, but I like to do it a different way. I like to go sub xiphoid like I'm looking at the heart. And what you'll see here is when I do that and I look more at the liver, that's what we call the Hugh Hefner sign. We actually will see if you go back. There's the bunny ears. And that is the IVC. Once you see that IVC, you're going to rotate to where your probe is going to be towards the patient's head and then you'll get this nice long black line which is your IVC. And you'll always know that's the IVC because it's kind of going towards the portal circulation. The other thing is you can follow your IVC to the left atrium, or the right atrium. Um, and that's a way that you can see that. So when you're looking at that IVC, what you do is you ask the patient to sniff, or you can just look to see how far it's compressing with deep breaths and doing valsalva. Um, and there'll be a change in diameter. Um, so with the IBC index, there's a couple studies out there, the two that I kind of picked out. Um.